Welcome in to To Our Health. And we have Dr. Justin Lewis with us today. We are so excited because we have two new OBGYN oh. <laughs> specialists in Montgomery, Alabama at Baptist South. And boy, do we need you. Well, thank you. So, and you're taking new patients. Absolutely. We are so excited. We will have the information on our screen so that people can, can get in touch with you and make an appointment with yes, you. Do you have to have a referral or? or? No, a referral is not necessary. Okay. Um, they can call the office with their concern or complaint and we can get an appointment for them to be seen. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Dr. we were talking earlier about um, the disparity in health care. Yes, ma'am. And we have such a problem with so many rural hospitals closing and, and we need patients to be taking care of themselves in a preventative fashion. Absolutely. So we were talking about, you know, prenatal care and share with me some of your philosophy on that. Right. Well, I'm glad you're bringing up the point around regarding a lot of regional L&D units and hospitals closing, which right. will further limit access from women, whether it be for their OB care or GYN care. Um, which is definitely concerning. Yeah. Um, people are having to travel even farther to get access. And when it comes to OB care, that can prevent even farther challenges and barriers. Um, but as you said, we definitely are here and open and willing to see patients and provide the best care possible. So in terms of prenatal care, uh, I'm a huge advocate for it, obviously. Um, studies have shown that women who have consistent prenatal care overall have better outcomes in terms of the course of their pregnancy. Um, pregnancy is an amazing, extraordinary process and journey. Oh, yeah. But we also know that there can be challenges along that journey. Um, and consistent quality prenatal care can allow for us to pick up on concerning signs, symptoms, or problems that we may need to address differently or be more aggressive managing to allow a mother to have the best outcome for herself and for baby. Um, so prenatal care is absolutely vital. Well, we were talking earlier, our audience is a little bit older, so the majority of our audience probably is not childbearing, but the right. trick is they have children True. who are having children. Absolutely. And, and I think that it's the prevention and the care, we've got to do more of that. I agree. And um, I, I wanted to ask you too, um, when we're talking about women's health, if you had to, if you had a patient that you wanted to really, really just stay healthy, not necessarily a pregnant patient, mm -hmm. but what would be the top things that you would want them to do? Well, I think for, first and foremost, um, definitely establishing care. You definitely, ideally, every patient should have a primary care provider who is their primary caretaker, the one who they're at least are seeing once a year for an annual preventive visit. Um, Again, there are many screening guidelines, many protocols based on age. True. Um, certain things that we look for and that hopefully, again, if there are concerns, we can catch sooner um, and address before it becomes more of a problem. Um, the same for women's health. You know, every woman should have, you know, ideally their OBGYN, who they see at least once annually for their well woman visit. And we also have guidelines um, based on your age, certain things that we specifically screen and look for. Um, so I think definitely starting with the preventive part of it and having that consistent care on the front end so that you catch things sooner. I, I, I get asked quite a bit, uh, are there certain procedures that, are, that you don't do anymore after a certain age? What, mm. what changes with different age limits as far as mm. what you should be doing? In terms of the patient or when they come In to see me for their screening? Uh, colonoscopies, breast right. exam, you know, all of those things that we normally always do, mm -hmm. pap smears, is there a cutoff time well, for any of that? For example, for pap smears, the cutoff is usually 65 years um, old. However, if you have, let's say, history of uh, cervical dysplasia or cervical cancer, depending on when that occurred, you may do paps a bit longer, but the general cutoff is 65 for pap smears. Okay. Um, I hope that answered your question. Well, uh, but yeah. breast exams for just 
uh, always. Routine. Uh, yes, ma'am. That would be a routine part of every visit when a patient okay. comes to see me for their uh, for their well woman okay. annual visit. What about mm -hmm. what about uh, colonoscopies? So that varies again based on your screening history and if you have certain abnormalities. Once you get to a certain point, I think usually it's around age 75, most GI doctors don't recommend uh, continuing it due to the increased risk of perforation per se at the older you get. So once you've had so many normal screenings, then it, there does come a point you don't need to continue those. Okay, but really, so I'm sorry. But it's a matter of risk, reward, right. ba balance. And, and really all depending on what your screenings have shown. Okay. Yeah. I have another one. You know, vaccines are so much a, tof a topic. How about what vaccines do you rec mm -hmm. recommend for specifically women? What about HPV? What about? Yeah, I'm a huge advocate for Gardasil, the HPV vaccine. Um, in fact, they have adjusted the age for it up to 45 years old now. When you think about it, it's really the only vaccine we have that can literally prevent cervical cancer. Right, right. Um, so I'm a huge advocate for patients discussing that with their OBGYN or their primary care provider. Again, it can, it can reduce your chance of getting HPV, which we know is the causative driving force of cervical cancer. True. True. Well, I love, I can tell that you have a sincere concern for your patients. Yes, ma'am. And that's confidence and compassion. Those are the two things I love in a doctor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for having and me. And practicing. And folks, you've got two wonderful new doctors to go to. And thank you for being with us. And we'll be right back.